We've gotten on the line this morning. We're going to open it with a word of, with some scripture this morning before we uh, go into our word this morning. But uh, reading from Psalms 63, excuse me, <clears throat> Psalm 63 and 1. And it says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. He said, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, and my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hand in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate upon thee in the night watch, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadows of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul follows hard after thee. Thy right hand upholds me. Praise God. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning for being our rock. We thank you this morning for being our salvation, Lord. And truly our souls do thirst for you, Lord God. We pant it after you, Lord God. We come before your presence this morning. Just asking, Lord God, that you continue to encourage us, that you will continue to comfort your people with your power, with your glory, Lord God. As we stand in this time, Lord God, as we endure the situations and the circumstances that are upon our world today, Lord God, we just ask right now that your people be encouraged and we will continue to stand as your witnesses, continue to tell men about your goodness, regardless of the times. Let men know that there's hope in you. Let them know that you are a rock, let them know that you are God is able to keep their hearts and keep their minds. Father God, we just come today, Lord God, just asking for your comfort in every situation, Lord God. You know all things. There's nothing, nothing that is hidden from you. We just pray this morning, Lord God, that you continue to touch hearts and minds. You continue to save, Lord God. You continue to open up the eyes of the blind, Lord God, that men will begin to see that they need to put their hope in you, that you're the one, Lord God, that holds their future, that all things is in your hands this morning. Lord, we thank you today for your word, for your word being an anchor to our souls, Lord God. We just ask right now, right now, that you comfort, Lord God, that your spirit begin to just, just move upon us, Lord God. We begin to open our eyes and open our love to you, Lord God. And you begin to continue, you continue to pour into our hearts and you continue to pour into our spirits the things that we need. Let, let your joy this morning, your joy truly be our strength, Lord God. That we continue to run this race, that we'll continue to fight this fight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. We give you praise, we give you honor, Lord, and we give you the glory right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just praise God this morning. Uh, praise God for all this listening in. Um, just thank the Lord for another day. For this, the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Psalm says, uh, David said in Psalms 118, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. Because regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on, God is good, and his mercy endures forever. And we're going to continue to worship and continue to praise him and continue to stand on his word. His word is an immovable anchor. It cannot be moved. Move an anchor. In, in a storm, God is the one that's able to keep us. He'll keep us. He'll keep our commitment to him. Praise God. We will, he'll keep us, praise God, safe in his arms. If we just stand in him and just continue to trust in all that he says. Um, it's a time, to me, it always has been a time for the church to really and the people of God to stand in the power of God and, and to magnify his glory and to magnify his power before the world uh, that men can see that they need to put their hope truly in God, 
that they need to know that he holds your future. Regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on, God holds our future. So we need to just continue to be steadfast, be unmovable. Uh, the word of God says in Psalms 108 and 1, uh, he says, oh, God, my heart is fixed. He said, my heart is fixed. When we look at that word fixed, it means to be in a set position. Uh, it's a position that's set up on something that's steady, uh, no variance, no, 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 not allowing any emulation to come in. It's something that's, that has been planted in us. He said, my heart. This word, this, the truth of God, the glory of God, the joy of the Lord, listen to me, it has to be in your heart. Praise the Lord. He says, my heart is fixed, and I will sing, and I will give praises, even with my glory. I remember, I read it, children in Israel say, how can we, how can we worship? How can we sing in, in, in a strange land? You know, we might be looking at that too, saying, how can we, how can we glorify? How can we uh, do the things that, uh, that the word is saying in such a strange time? This is the time to really give God the glory. Because listen to me, everything is in his hand. Men don't know right now what to do. They don't know which way to go. Uh, they're trusting in their own abilities, their own power. They're trusting in science. And I'm not saying some of those these things are bad at all, but I'm just saying we as the people of God, we know that everything is in his hands. He spoke the heavens and he spoke the earth into existence just by his word. And that's why we've got to continue to hold on to his word. And our heart has to be fixed in the things that God has said. And regardless of the pressure, regardless of the situation that come upon us, we have to continue to say, Lord, you know all things. All things are before you. And I'm going to stand in you. Your joy, I'm going to trust in the joy that you said that's in your word, the joy that's in your power. And if I, can, if I stay in the joy of the Lord, you know what happens? I can still be a person that, that, that has my peace. Praise the Lord. I can still be a person that, that can run the race and fight the fight. I can still tell men, even in the weary times, even in the troubled times, God is able. God is able. Turn your face into the Lord. Begin to look under to him. One thing we have, we have to understand, God is a preserver. God is a keeper. He'll keep that which you commit. When you commit yourself to God, God will not fail you. There's no failure in God. That's why we have to hold on and say, Lord, I'm going to look unto you. Look what the Bible says to us in Psalms 30, 31 and 23. It says, 31 and 23 of Psalms, it says, Lord, O oh Lord. He said, oh, love the Lord, all ye saints. He said, what? Love the Lord, what? All ye saints. He said, love the Lord, with all ye saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful. God does what? He preserves. He keeps. He preserves the faithful and plentifully rewards the, the proud doer. He said, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your what? Your heart. All ye that hope where? In the Lord. Let me read that one more time. He said, oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Those what? Are continuing to do the will of God. Continuing to do God's will. I can do all things through Christ. Because what am I doing? I'm looking for crisis. I'm looking for him to strengthen me. I'm looking for him to give me the things that I need, that I can stand in this time. He says, he says for, be of good courage, and he shall. He shall what? He shall what? Strengthen your what? Your hearts. He'll strengthen your hearts. And all ye that hope, and, and all ye that what? Put your hope in God. Everybody's hoping in God. They say God will do what? He, he'll strengthen your heart. Why? Because God is a God that can preserve. God will keep you. Praise God. That's why our, our mind and our heart, our eyes need to be up on the things of God. Let's get focused upon God. I know they're saying a lot of things, and the news is saying a lot of things. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying don't, don't pay attention to things. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to say we had our heads in a hole, but I, I just want us as people of God to stay focused on God more than a lot of things that's happening around us. Because if we're God's people, let me tell you something. God is able to keep us. God will watch over us. We just read the scripture. What did it say? God will preserve us. God preserves the faithful, those that are trusting in him, those that are believing in him, those that have the faith, those that are believing that God is a rewarder of those that, what, that diligently what, seek him, the Bible says. We're diligently seeking God. That's why our eyes and our hearts got to be fixed on the things of God. Look what he says to us again in Psalms 145. In 15, Psalms 145 and 15, it says, The eyes of all wait upon thee. 
Thou givest them their meat in due season. God knows what you need. He said he'll give you what you need in due season. What that due season, that means that at the appointed time, every, God is a God, listen to me, God is a God of purpose. God moves according to his will and things that, that are according to his purpose. He said he'll give you what you need in due season. He says, thou open thy hand and satisfy the desire of ever, every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that what? Look at Psalms 145 and 18. He said, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in what? In truth. Hmm? He said he, he's near to those that do what? That call upon him. Our eyes need to be fixed upon God. We need to stay focused in these times upon our God and the power and ability of our God. He said he will fulfill the desires of them that fear him, and he also will hear their cry and will save them. It says the Lord preserveth all of them that love him. He said God is a God is a keeper. Let me tell you something. God is a keeper. That's why I always say this is not about church going to church, being in a church. This is not about religious order. Uh, this, is, this is about having a personal, intimate relationship with God. And that's what every, if you're a believer today, every believer, this is what we're supposed to have, a personal, intimate relationship with our God. That means it goes beyond uh, a church service. Or it goes beyond jumping and shouting and all the things that sometimes we, we may do in the church and, and songs and things of this nature, and we look for some of these. Some people look for some of these things. They had to come on Sunday and get a fix, you know. But God is the keeper. We don't want just a Sunday fix or a Bible study Tuesday fix. We want God to, David said a few minutes ago, my heart is fixed. What did that, I said earlier, what does that mean? My heart is in a set position. My heart is in a position that it, that it is steadfast. Because what is it doing? I am holding on to everything that God said. What did Jesus say in Matthew 4 and 4? Man shall not live by bread alone, but out of every word that what? That proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Listen to me this morning. We got to hold on to every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You can't hold on to it if you don't know it. You, don't, you can't hold on to it if you haven't intimately studied. I mean, into, not just reading scripture, but intimately studying this word and understanding God is speaking to me. God is encouraging me. I can be encouraged through his word. And not only that, I can encourage others. This is, this is obedience. And I'm standing in a thing of obedience because obedience flows from a heart that loves God. Those that love God, they're going to be obedient to God. They're going, they're obedient, obedient is, is divine. It, it, it has to be a divine love, you know, that standing in God is holding on to God, that's saying, Lord, I love you, and I'm standing in you, not for what you can give me, not for what you can do, but I'm loving you for who you are. I'm loving you what you are, and that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to stay and be steadfast in his love. He wants us to be stay, stay and steadfast in faith and continue to look unto him and hold on to his word. What did David say in, in Psalms 119? And 10, he says, hide your word where? In my heart. He says, I said, the young man cleanse his way. He says, I got to hide your word in my heart. I got to, what we said a few minutes ago, my heart is what? Fixed. You can't, your heart cannot be fixed if his word is not keeping it fixed. That's why my eyes got to be fixed on the Lord. Don't let anything get in the way of your focus right now. Don't even, because you got to have focused faith. You have, you have to have focused faith. My faith has to be focused on God. My faith has to be focused on all that the Lord is saying to me. Praise God. I've got to stand in the power of his joy because God is a preserver. God is a keeper. Praise the Lord. And I've got, and I've got to know this in, within myself. This, the, I'm, all I'm saying to you this morning, that this is personal. This is personal. God wants to speak to you. God wants to direct you. God wants to show you the way to go. God wants to uplift you this morning. Praise the Lord, because it's all in his word. That's why we have to stay focused on God. You got to understand something. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, it talks about how the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. If he runs to and fro, God sees everything. Listen to me. Nothing is hidden from God. God sees whatever situation you're in, whatever you're dealing with right now. You might be in some type of pain. You might be suffering or going through something. Praise God. You might be in a place of worry and stress. 
But God sees all things. He says, eyes run to and fro the earth, making himself strong. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden from his eyes. Praise the Lord. So that's why we got to keep our focus on God. Look what it says to us in Psalms 25 and 15. Psalms 25 and 15. And if you don't get these scriptures, we will get them out to you. Uh, let us know. Praise the Lord. We, we will get them to you. Praise the Lord that you can have the word. And, I, I, and it would be wonderful that during the, through the week you, begin, you study up on these scriptures, you begin to read them. Uh, as you say, Lord, open it up to me, unfold unto me what your will is for my life. Praise the Lord. In, in this time, uh, while we're sitting in the home, sitting in the home or, or whatever we're doing, uh, that God is, 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 is still using us and God still wants to use us in this time that we live in. So Psalms uh, 25 and 15, and it says, my eyes are ever toward the Lord. He said, what? My eyes are ever toward the Lord. He said, where am I looking? I'm looking at God. You know, I'm walking through the valley of shallow death. I'm looking at God. Why? Because God is my guidance. God is my protection. God is my guidance. God is my protection. He said, my eyes are always looking at him. My eyes are toward the Lord. Praise the Lord. The, he said, toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. He said, I'm looking at him because God is the one that's able to keep me. He said, he's the one that's able to keep me out of the net, the trap, that, uh, the things that's trying to trap my mind, the things that's trying to trap my heart, the things that's trying to trap my spirit. He said, he's the one that can get, get me out. He's the one that my joy can stay and be manifested in him. Because I know why. You know why? Because he's keeping my heart. And I can continue to rejoice in him. I can continue to rejoice, be glad, give the great delight. When you, when you, the Bible talking to delight yourself in the Lord, you know, that we have to delight ourselves in him. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. I thank you for this food that I'm eating. I thank you for watching on my children. I thank you for, for those that, that you're touching. Praise the Lord. The things that you're doing around the world, I'm praising you for it. Praise the Lord. I'm believing you for victory right now in the name of Jesus. Don't give up hope. Psalms 34 and 15. Psalms 34 and 15 today. Psalms 34 and 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open unto their cries. Wow. His eyes are upon me. We just said his eyes were on what? To and fro. God sees everything. God knows everything. God sees you. You don't have to have a great position in this world for God to see you. God sees you. God knows you. God saw David out there in the sheep field when he was, when he was, when he was a shepherd keeping the sheep. God knew him. God saw him as he sung and praised God and held on to the sheep and did the things he was doing on his job. God saw him, and understand, being a shepherd was not a, was not a great job. It was a, a nasty job. Uh, shepherds had odors to them because they were keeping the sheep all the time and, and doing the things they, they were doing. But he kept the sheep, and he praised God. But God knew him. God knew him because when it was time for a king, God told him, there's a man after my own heart. That was David. There was a man after my, on my own heart. He wasn't part of the lineage of Saul. He wasn't a great person as far as the world knew, but God knew him. I just want you to know that God sees you. God knows you. You ain't got to be pastor. You ain't got to be prophet. You got to be this, all these things. God sees you. God knows you. And I want you to be encouraged this morning. You, there, there are no small folks to God. We are all great, and great to the Lord. So he says to us here, the eyes of the Lord, Upon the righteous, his ears are open. I love that. He said his ears are open unto his cries. 17 says the righteous cry. We call on him. We cry out to him. He said, and the Lord, what? The Lord, who hears? The Lord hears. Who hears? The Lord hears. Whatever you're praying right now, believe me, God hears you. God hears you. Now, listen, things move according to his purpose. God hears you. If it's a prayer of righteousness, a prayer of truth, God hears you. The prayer of the righteous, what? The faithful prayer of the righteous. The prayer of, of a righteous man, a man of faith, the veil of what? The veil of much. 
He said the faith, he said the, the righteous cry and the Lord hears and deliver them out of all their troubles. The Lord hears you. The Lord hears you. And God, listen to me. God is the deliverer. That's part of that word, salvation, that we talked about last week. Deliverance. God is a deliverer. God knows how to, de- de- how to deliver the righteous out of temptation. God's eyes right now are upon you. So Psalms 121 and 1 says, so I need to lift my eyes unto the Lord. Hmm? Lift my eyes where? Lift my eyes unto the Lord. Keep, in other words, keep looking up. Keep looking up. Keep trusting him. That was one thing my, my pastor, my late pastor used to say to me all the time. He said, son, keep looking up. Son, keep looking up. He said that to me. Keep looking up. The last time I, I had saw him uh, when he was in the hospital, and I worked in the hospital, and I would go up and check on him. Uh, and I, the last time I, I saw him alive, I walked past his room. And he's pointing. He looked at my face and pointed straight up in the air. He was still telling me to keep looking up. I had no idea that he was going to die. I had no idea that I was ever going to become pastor, none of those things. And I just, all the time, I just, I just did what he said. And I'm telling you the same thing. Keep looking at God. Keep lifting your eyes unto the Lord. Regardless of what's happening, lift your eyes unto the hills. He said, which cometh my help. Psalms 121, we'll read it, and we're going to close. He says, Psalms 121, he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from which cometh what? My help. Where's your help? Coming from God. My help is coming from where? From God. You've got to say that to yourself. You've got to say that to your family. Brothers, you've got to say that over your household. My help is coming from God. Whatever we need, God's got it. Men of God, you've got you to be pastors in your home. You've got to stand. Sisters, be those missionaries. Stand in your home and tell, tell your family, tell those around you, my God is able. My God is able. My God has the power. My God has the might. I don't care what they're saying, what's happening. God is able to keep that which we commit. God will hold us up. He says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Look, he said, he said, which made heaven and earth. He said he made heaven and earth. What, my help is coming from the person that made heaven, person that made earth. Praise the Lord. That's where my help comes from. That's where my help is coming from this morning. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Five says this, and this is very important. He said, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall, there's the word again, preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forever. In other words, he let us know that God, this is about God's sustaining power. God is a keeper, and God is able to keep that which you committed to him. You just got to stand and you got to trust in him. You got to hold on to what God is saying. You can't allow things to move you away from what the word of God is saying. I'm, 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 I'm going to be talking about the word of God because I think this is, this is the thing that we need in this time. This is our bread. This is what's going to keep us. People are looking for something great. Well, here it is. We're looking for something to really hold on to. There it is. The biggest wrestle, the, the biggest thing that people wrestle with is with the word is having faith to believe it. It takes faith to believe it. He that cometh to God must believe, huh? Hebrews, Hebrews tells 11 to 6, he must believe that what? God is. Man, I'm believing this morning that God is. I just need a few more people to believe that with me. I'm believing this morning that God is. Hallelujah. God is. God is. God is. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can even ask or think. Man, I love this. Because my God is a keeper. I thank God for all of you this morning. God, I want you to know this morning that God loves you. I love you. Praise the Lord. Let's stay in the love of God. Let's encourage each other. Let's encourage others. Praise the Lord. Some of us getting on Facebook and, and Twitter and all these things. Let's, let's put something on there that's encouraging. Let's put something on there that's uplifting. Praise the Lord. Uh, people got cats and dogs. Let's talk about the goodness of God and how, how, how his glory and his power. Praise the Lord. Because folks need to hear that. Let them get, if they get tired of hearing that's okay, we're going to keep on, let's keep on pumping this word. Let's keep on pushing the glory of God. 
because it's time for men to turn their face to him. It's been, it's been high time. It's high time to turn their face to God. High time to look unto him because all things in his hand. He, he's the creator of what? The heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. I thank him this morning. Let's continue to pray for all those that, that are among us. Praise the Lord. Those of the sick that we know, uh, those that we have made requests for, pray for, uh, pray for the Turner family, uh, Sister Corey's family, mother, all them that uh, lost their dad, you know, uh, keep her, hold, hold her up, praise the Lord. Uh, and all those that, that have asked us to pray for them, some, in, some are, are sick in different places. Uh, we just want to, we just want to trust God right now. We want to trust the Lord right now for all things because all things are before him. Let's check on each other. Praise the Lord. Some may need something. This, uh, older people, let's check on them and, and, and uh, pray for them that, that, uh, and bring things over to check on them. I thank God for some my brothers checking on me. Say, uh, Brother Chris, bring, bring some water. You know, uh, sometimes I forget I'm a senior citizen. But I thank God for the Lord just being so good. God is so good. And I love all of you today. Let's pray. Father God, we bless your name. We thank you for all things. We thank you today for being a keeper. We thank you for your eyes being on us. And, Lord, in return, we're going to keep our eyes on you. Regardless of how out of control this thing may seem right now, you got control of it. You got control of it. You hold the winds, you hold the storms, everything. You can speak right now and everything stops. It hears the voice of the one that created it, and it moves away. Lord, we're trusting in you. We ask you to encourage every heart and mind. Let us not be weak in our stand and our hope and our faith in you. Let us be those pillars of light that men can see and men are running to. Father, we glorify your name today. We bind every spirit that's not like you. We stand in your glory. Just keep our hearts and minds right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, we'll praise you. But we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I said before, if you need these scriptures, we, we will get them to you. Praise the Lord. Uh, so you can... Study them on your own time, praise the Lord, but uh, we thank God for all of